uh, on the subject. When I was choosing the subject on what to say here, uh, one was, of course, you know, your ride to wherever you have reached. We are not like Vidya, she's just left from here. It isn't from literally rags to riches varieties. It's been an upward uh, stroll, so to say, uh, or a stretch. But then I was just thinking, you know, I don't want to speak about commercial subjects. I don't want to speak about foreign direct investment. I don't want to speak about copyright laws. I don't want to speak about IT Act. Uh, some of you know about it and some of you will know about it. What I thought was important, and this is again when Harvard Law School again comes into the story. I was at Harvard and one question was asked by the professor and he said, you know, what would you, uh, what, is, what, sh what is the law on this? And I said, hello, after raising my hand. And he said, yes, Ms. Anan. So I said, this is the answer. He said, I don't remember asking you what the law is. What should the law be? That is the issue. And I think that is where the whole process of analysis, of discussion, of... Um, of thought process and of higher order of life starts. So in any case, I decided that I would speak on issues which are controversial, speak on issues which there is a question of morality and law, speak on issues where there is a space between what is right and what is wrong and how it should be possibly addressed and how it is being addressed in these systems today. In this um, particular context, we might just come straight away to uh, law and morals have a common origin, but they diverge in development. Both law and morality, and I say this because today a lot of moral issues are coming up into place. Even yesterday you might have read about the Facebook statements made by these girls who were arrested and the Supreme Court has now intervened. And I believe yesterday also Supreme Court laid down guidelines on eve teasing. I'll come to that in a moment. But the point is law and moral seem to have the same common objective, the benefit of society, but how they address this is one part, they differ. As I say, one is the center and one is the circumference. The second part possibly is the difference between the two is that law is dynamic. And believe me, in India it is really dynamic, whereas morals are somewhat static. So, you know, you have literally the pink brigade in places and they go and pull out women from the bars and say, you can't be in bars, and pull out women saying, you can't wear short dresses and that is bad. So you, you really have a kind of static behavior of morals through our society and our Indian society encompasses really a wide uh, horizon of views, and a lot of them may be somewhat conservative even now, whereas law is progressing in various ways. Um, on the front of jurisprudence, morality commands each individual to do that is advantageous to the community, his personal advantages included, but there are many acts useful to the community which legislation ought not to command, and these are the areas I might be touching upon very briefly. There are also many injurious actions which it ought not to forbid, although morality does so. And you know, within these you will find, we'll be talking about very briefly on possibly live-in relationships, about homosexuality, about uh, cup panchayats, which have become uh, synonymous with uh, something that is heavily injurious to life, but the law needs to address those issues. The other issues sometimes law doesn't. You know, the private domain. You as youngsters say very often, let us do what we want to do. Well, there are some spheres which you must be permitted to do what you want to do, even sometimes if it is injurious to your health. And I must say here at one instance that this may not necessarily reflect my personal morality issues or answers to the questions. I think these are choices individuals have to make, the choices have to be available, and there have to be areas where law has to say, all right, this may be immoral, but legal rights are there, and they will not impinge upon morality. On these fronts, some of the issues which are there between right and wrong, issues pushing the boundaries of stereotypical uh, right and wrong, and forcing the people to adopt a fresh mindset. You know, you find this happening, for example, in sati abolition. Sati was considered a social good. It was, it was happening in society, acceptable in society, but law compelled the change. said, no, you can't have it. It is antithetical to civil society. People can't be burnt alive on funeral pyres just because their husbands have died. And it took a little time, but law changed the mindset into a different format altogether. Issues causing conflict between the law and societal norms, and these are the issues that I mentioned, some of the live-in relationships, uh, the uh, questions of homosexuality, of gay people, of their rights in society, of age-old traditions of the Kap Panchayats. Some is issues fall in the space between right and wrong, and one thing we say is here, which I've said earlier, the law has progressed much faster than the mindset of the society, because there are different parameters in law, not those of morality. Kushbu's case, a case which, in fact, I had handled, um, which, who, she's a very well-known uh, South Indian film actress, 
and she made certain statements in, in, um, for a magazine, India Today in fact, and spoke about the fact that live-in is a matter of social reality and it is something that people should face rather than hide and in fa fact people should ensure that health standards are maintained so that people, children are protected. It was in these broad formats that she spoke about live-in relationships and on that 21 defamation cases were filed against her saying that she has defamed women a, B, that these are obscene statements, so there's obscenity under section 292 of Indian Penal Code, and these 21 cases all across Tamil Nadu were pulling her from place to place. The Supreme Court intervened, and I must just tell you an episode, I know the time is short, but nonetheless, I was addressing arguments there and talking about living relationships, and I looked across, and I saw the judges, and in Supreme Court, believe me, the three judges, Supreme Court judges are over 60 most of the time. And I looked at the people behind me, some of my juniors who were assisting me, and they are in the age group of uh, 20 to 27 and I looked at the people who are right next to me I don't want to give my age but roughly it is about 50 um, so there there were these three age groups and I was just wondering I said you know one of my juniors with younger one said ma'am what's wrong with these statements I said yeah well on the other hand you know you talk about living and and I looked up and I saw those judges kind of saying you know so I said what am I addressing morality by whose standards my standards these young people's standards or those 60 year olds standards who would actually judge it. So that is when it was very fortunate. We found that the Supreme Court three be judge bench said, no, this is not obscene. Use of the word sex alone is, doesn't mean that it becomes obscenity. Use of the word live in doesn't mean anything that it is immoral. It may be model or immoral, but law does not say you can't engage in live-in relationship. Law does not bar it. Law leaves it alone. It's a private domain area. You want to do it, you want to do it. And one thing I might say here, as Voltaire said, I may agree or disagree, but I will defend to death the right of people to say so. So I may say have live-in, I may say don't have live-in, but I will not allow anybody to cut down somebody by filing defamation cases. So Kushbu's case came as a grand success in this entire scheme of things where it was held that social morality is, is subjective and criminal law cannot be used to quiet a person who is expressing their views on the question of personal autonomy. And in the same context, the court said that a man and woman may live together and it is not illegal. And please, this is not a sanction to say live together. I must make the distinction, you people are all management students. You are not, you are not uh, children of school or teenagers who are not, that's why I chose the subject controversial as it is, to say I am not sure I believe in live-in. I have my doubts about the whole question of this arrangement because it is possibly anti-society to some extent. But live-in is something which law doesn't bar, is all the statement that I am possibly making at this time and saying, yes, it is right, personal domain questions should possibly be outside law. Um, some of the other questions as have come around here, and I will quickly uh, come to homosexuality, because here, homosexuality has been treated as a criminal offense. We go back to the English laws and say homosexuality is, is not only bad, it's, it's a criminal offense. It is punishable by imprisonment with life. It is considered against the order of nature, and it continues on the statute book since 1860. Um, on the other hand, social reality of how people do accept homosexuality, one of the surveys, and actually, Kushbu spoke about the same, so I wonder whether one could get, you know, uh, attacked on the same platforms. But I think, uh, I still believe in the freedom of speech too much to not do so. Um, now, so the Delhi High Court. The Delhi High Court, you know, came on to issues and saying, sorry, homosexuality may be moral or immoral, that's quite another thing. But there are three issues which, which confront us today, which is A, the freedom of expression of an individual. This is a private domain area. And this is a private life area, so therefore, Law should not intrude on that area. B, it is the freedom of, of life itself, not only the freedom of expression, it is the freedom of life. C, it is the freedom on, to deal with health issues. You know what happens possibly in, in homosexuality and other issues. If you criminalize them, you make them hide behind. And if you make them hide behind, it tends to aggravate the disease in society and there is no way to address it. So on each of these fronts, that is why the health issues kind of see vulnerable to HIV, to AIDS infections, the efforts, prevention efforts on HIV, India incidentally is one of the highest counts on HIV AIDS that uh, the world has. The basic fundamental human rights are denied, they are subjected to abuse, harassment and assault from various angles. The Delhi High Court then talked about popular morality 
as distinct from constitutional morality. This is, to some extent, very broadly to say this constitutional morality is a higher order than social morality. People may perceive that as a model or immoral question, but law has its own criteria. You have Article 21, you have Article 14, you have the Constitution, and that is what we must comply with. Uh, Dr. Ambedkar on some of the constitutional debates, who's the founder of uh, the Constitution, I'll just address to you one of the things here. Uh, constitutional morality is not a natural sentiment. It has to be cultivated. We must realize that our people have yet to learn it. Democracy in India is only a top dressing on an Indian soil, which is essentially undemocratic. So I think constitutional morality has to be developed. And we are in the process of developing it. On living relations, this is what the Supreme Court held. It is not an offense. Um, no law which prohibits living relationship or premarital sex. It is a right to life under Article 21 because you're talking about major. You are not talking about younger people from majority. You're talking about mature, major people, mature or otherwise even major, one of the two at least. Um, Lata Singh also, the Supreme Court held the same. And I must put in my caveat here, I'm a very strong believer in the institution of marriage. I'm a very strong believer in the institution of society. These are the rights that law has given under the Protection uh, of Women from Domestic Violence Act. So women are given right of residence, of living, I'm talking about, right of residence, right of uh, ensuring that there's no cruelty against them. Uh, but law here, just a pause here, a caveat here, law doesn't talk about living as an overnight stand, one night stand, where you have a relationship to the tune of marriage, something like marriage, a long term, 20 years, 30 years, long relationship where you've lived and held out to society that you're married. So we haven't quite gone the entire American way or the Western way. We are still maintaining it is like marriage, but the formalities of marriage may not have been performed. In those situations, law gives various rights, and to that extent, law is limited. First, Domestic Violence Act said, give rights to live-in. Supreme Court said, hold on, not all live-ins, live-ins which are like marriage. And this is the two judgments of the Supreme Court on that. This is the third judgment which talks about maintenance to be given to a live-in partner. Now, Khap Panchayats, uh, 14th century honor killings, uh, a study which we were seeing recently, uh, this is the Supreme Court, I'll come back to that in a moment, and in 560 cases studied, a total of 121 persons were killed. I don't know if any of you know what Khap Panchayats are. Khap Panchayats are broadly uh, Panchayats which are self-ordained by so-called natural law process, and they say women and uh, men marrying between the same gotra, gotra, not even caste. Uh, that is prohibited, and this is principally in these areas of Haryana and uh, Rajasthan, etc. And therefore, there is an ordain by the panchayats, kill them. They can't live, so therefore this part. And as a consequence, what happens in society is so many murders taking place, and this is murder by any standards. Morality uh, is of the Khap panchayats, but law under 302 IPC says, if you, if you kill a person, you kill a person. There's no two ways about it. Uh, Supreme Court here, says wholly illegal and has to be ruthlessly stamped out. There's nothing honorable in them. And incidentally, if you talk to anybody from those areas, they say it's very honorable. People cannot do this. This is against morality. There is where morality and law, there's a divergence between right and wrong in those paths. This is where the kangaroo, these, these khap panchayats and maha khap panchayats take law into their own hands, which is like kangaroo courts, totally illegal. Um, Hindu Marriage Act says this is legal. There's no illegality. Some of the instances where people were killed in society. Bombay High Court says this is legal. Lata Singh, which I've already talked about. So to come to the broad framework of what we say, today the legal framework of our country is one of the most powerful tools to ensure that there is a change and a transition. The transition is very quick, it is far-sighted and pragmatic as we have seen from some of the judgments in whether Nas Foundation or on the live-in relationships or on the Khap Panchayats. Where there is lacuna in law, the law is filling it in. For example, Vishaka's case, where women who are working in workplace for their protection, you require guidelines. Even yesterday, Eve teasing was mentioning to you. And incidentally, just the last part on that, Eve teasing is considered a small thing. Somebody troubled a woman, what's the big deal? That's not, that's not, you know, called her a Julie or called her a Bobby or pulled her hair or whatever else or tweaked her nose. That's not, that's not an offense. But that's what the problem is. The mindset has to change. And the law has to intervene there to say, no, this is a serious crime. You can't attack a woman and look at that incident that happened in Assam. That she was molested in broad daylight in, on a public street in front of God knows how many people. This is where the law has to step in and say, sorry, this is wrong, this cannot be done. If it needs amendment, it is done either by legislation or by some judicial interpretations. And fortunately for us, the courts and the legislature are very quick in this regard. And to this extent, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.